Hello everybody, uh, welcome to another update video from me, Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer, hoping to develop Inkscape in the way that users need. This week we had our big 1.1 release, and so I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to everybody who helped make uh, Inkscape 1.1 possible. Every single person who contributed to my Patreon or, or contracted me or helped me or bartered with me, um, helped me help make Inkscape 1.1 the success that it is. We managed to get in some amazing features. We managed to fix an awful lot of things. So I want to thank you all because, um, you know, it's with user support that we make Inkscape more like what users need and what they want. Um, hopefully we can get more support as things go along. So please do consider uh, liking and subscribing and sh sharing these videos, especially if you know uh, companies that might be interested in sponsoring me. Um, now that the release is out the way, I am thinking about what kind of features I'm going to be developing for the rest of the year. The thing that I've had my heart set on for possibly about, about a year now is to implement the the multi-page slash artboards feature. We have a user experience ticket already that goes through the design. I have some good ideas about what kinds of features are necessary in order to be able to do the kind of workflows that are necessary in order to develop that. But I need more support. And I'm also unsure about uh, whether there is enough support out there in the wider community uh, to get people on board with helping me, either helping me uh, with time uh, or you know testing and stuff like that, or helping me by subscribing to my Patreon. I don't know whether I should do a full campaign and ask people directly, "Hey, come and support me," and I'll and I'll try and do, develop this specific fe feature. So, what I'd like for my Patreons to do, if if you can, let me know. My, do you think I should uh, do a campaign, or do you think I should develop the feature anyway? I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, that's why I'm asking. So let's get into um, the actual work that I did this week. It was mostly connectors work. Um, I did some extensions improvements for testing. But that's by the by. I do that sort of stuff all, all the time, improving the, the, the website, looking after the website, um, especially during a release, making sure it doesn't fall, fall over with everybody down, downloading stuff. Um, but the connectors is what probably people are interested in seeing. We have basically a lot of it complete now. Um, you can actually draw lines between objects and they look good. Um, when you create lines between each of the hints, the hint points, the actual sub points are created correctly. Uh, remember last week I said that some objects have like real points on them and other, other objects have hints where you could connect a thing. Those hints basically get instantiated, created into real points when you draw a line now. Um, one of the things that I thought was very important is that unlike the previous connectors tool, when you start drawing a line, that line, that shadow line that shows you where the line will go, should actually represent <laughs> the route that it will take. Right? It shouldn't be a straight line and then turn into a, an orthogonal route when you let go or like and create the the line which meant that i had to recode the way that it works so that the live path effect could actually generate some of the code for the tool right generate the, the actual lines so that you can show it on the screen as the user uh, starts making lines um i also wanted to improve the way in which those those sub points were being rendered a lot of the time they were being rendered flat against the sur surface of a rectangle or you know flat against the uh, the edge and they shouldn't be and um i just spent a long time this week reading libavoid the library that we use to do the, the the routing algorithms and it has an awful lot of code that deals with sort of creating shapes and things not just points so I had to kind of like re-engineer some of the code that we that I originally done in order to like put those shapes in and hope that Libavoid's algorithms uh, understand that when a point is coming out of the left side of an object, that means that we do not really want the line to go down by default, we or up. 
We really want it to go out from the side. Um, I, th I think that's exactly the kind of process that we have now. Um, I'm monitoring it, I'm seeing what kind of results that we're getting, but at least I'm happy that we're using more of the Libavoid code, doing things in ways that I think that code base expects us to do. Um, it's certainly a lot better than we had before, where we were just using naive, naive points. Um, I tied up the curvature and the connection type options in the tool toolbar. So now you can set those and create both orthogonal and non-orthogonal connections. You can also create curved connections, which I've had a lot of fun with, uh, creating these like curvatured uh, items, which only work when you do a, a um, orthogonal line anyway. Uh, I did spend time trying to do the uh, line jumping, right? So where it's two lines intersect, one of the lines jumps over the other line. Um, but that's a complicated problem. Uh, I feel like I've got most of that work. I'm just building lines at the time at the current time, but it's not complete, so I can't really show, show you much there. Um, I'm very happy so far with the progress that I'm making with this connectors tool. Um, but I feel like I'm, I've definitely bitten off a lot more than I thought it would be. Um, maybe maybe I. I uh, in the back of my mind knew that it was going to be a pretty big job um, but I wanted to do do this right I, I didn't want to just add the clients requested features on top of the existing connector tool because that connector tool isn't very good and as I said we weren't even using libavoid properly so you know yes I'm spending a lot more time yes I'm um, spending more sleepless nights and, and, and effort um, programming cleaner code, I hope. But I think at the end of the day, uh, if a client comes back to me and says, hey, Martin, we love the work that you did on the connectors tool. We'd now like it to have this extra feature, or this extra feature, or this extra feature. I think those pro projects are going to be cheaper to do. Whereas before, if we just kept on adding on to the the rot, um, it would have taken like it builds up over time, and it gets more and more expensive. Whereas if you have a clean implementation, something that can be extended, it can be extended. Uh, you've got a better chance of being able to add a feature in. Um, so with hope, I think we're heading in the right direction. In the coming week, I'm going to hopefully finish the the jumps. And I'm going to start, uh, and hopefully finish, on the actual node, uh, sub-node creation. That's basically where you can like move them around and stuff. Um, there's probably some more cleanup as well. I keep on hitting bugs as I as I use it, and I'm practicing with it. It's available now. I'm going to paste post links so that you can download it and try it. Uh, Linux especially. Windows probably let me know. Uh, Mac probably not. But if you have a Mac and you desperately want to try it, I can probably try and sort something out um, and that's basically it for this week thank you all very much for watching this update video um, let me know what you think uh, what you think I should be doing and um, yeah I'll see you see you all next week